Thank you for joining me. I am going to walk you through how to complete your monthly reports. So first things first, you need to be on our Georgia Main Street website. So make sure that you've typed in georgiamainstreet.org at the top of your page in the user bar here. Once you do, you will arrive on this page, uh, our home page. Up in the top right hand corner, you'll see something that says monthly reporting. That's what you're going to do to submit your monthly reports. You're going to click on that and it will take you to our monthly reporting section. So you do not need a special access code. You do not need um, a user ID or a password. This uh, report is designed so that anyone can access it and just start plugging and playing with their information. So first things first, you're going to scroll down here and put in your community for um, practice purposes. I'm just going to select Ackworth. Your designation level, if you are a startup community working through um, the process of becoming a Main Street designated community, that's where you would fall. And then everybody else should know their current designation. I'm gonna select a GEMS because that's what Ackworth is. Month of report. And so we're always reporting a month behind. So January's reports due by the end of February. February's reports due by the last day of March. March's report is due by the last day of April. So the month of the report is um, the report month that you're actually reporting on, not the month that we're in. So right now, today is uh, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. We are going to select January because that's the month we're reporting on. Region, you would select this. If you don't know which region your community falls in, please reach out to our team. You'll see our email address right up here at the top of the screen, mainstreet at dca.ga.gov for any information on here that you have that may be hard to understand or if you're a little confused, that's where you're going to reach out to. Um, but again, for demonstration purposes, I know that we're in region three, so I'm going to select that. Um, I don't know the population off the top of my head for Ackworth. I should, but I don't. Um, I'm just going to select um, 10 to 20. And then you're going to plug in the person reporting. This is the name of the person who's actually completing the report. So you can see I've put in my name, Jessica Reynolds. And then this next section is important. You will get a copy of everything listed here. So the important thing to know is where you want that copy to go. And that's why we say, I would like a copy of this completed report emailed to, because sometimes that's different. Um, if you are a staff member and you wanna make sure it goes to the director or to your economic development director or to your city manager, wherever you want that copy to go to, that's the email address you're gonna put in here. And that's the person who will receive a copy of this report. Now, if you're me and I'm filling this out and I want to get a copy of this for myself, then I would put my personal email address in here. Again, it just depends on what is best for you and your program. If you have um, completed our monthly reporting before and previously, you will notice that this next section is different. So one of the things we are doing is trying to ascertain how much uh, is being invested into actually operating the Main Street program in your community month by month. And what I mean by operating, I'm talking about operational expenses. So this would be how much money is going towards staff salaries, benefits, uh, office space, technology, travel, training, um, anything that it takes to actually operationally support your program from month to month. And the reason I want you to look at this holistically is because I know that in some communities, Main Street programs have their own budget and their own line items, but in other ones, they may be part of a bigger budget. Um, in some communities, uh, their operating expenses and support may come from different revenue streams. Um, so I want you to think holistically here. Um, but I need to know and understand how much money is being invested into making your program operationally happen from month to month. Um, again, 
the projects, the um, programs, all that other stuff that is the actual execution of like special things, that's, the, that's gonna be listed below. This is just what does it take to operationally make your program happen? So you're gonna enter that amount here. Again, we've got a little call out button just to you know make sure you're aware. If you are one of those people that has a specific budget line item in the city's budget and let's just say for um you know for you know illustrative purposes that your budget is a hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the entire year um now realistically you could break that down and say that ten thousand dollars a month is going to operating your program if you're going to spend that entire amount then that's fine um but again, we're trying to make sure we're capturing that. So if I know that I have a $120,000 budget, the city spends it down to 100% of that every single year, then I would put $10,000 right here. Um, and again, always kind of watch the zeros and the commas. Um, there isn't a comma that's going to show up here. Some of the best things you can do to make sure that you don't accidentally put in too many zeros is to um, use a number copy and paste it and then put it in here and that way you're not typing it in um, again to make sure that uh, you're not missing something or you could do what I've done here which is I always kind of count over one two three and do a little click so that way you can see this little line is showing up to where you would insert a comma um, it's not going to keep one if you put it in there but but at least it lets me know that yes, I've got the right amount of zeros here. So for some communities, this number of how much is happening and being invested in your program operationally may change from month to month. For other people, it may be stagnant. Um, that's okay. Again, we're trying to get a better idea of how much money is being invested into operating your program um, with these things being considered. Again, travel, training, uh, office space, salary, benefits, that sort of thing. Then once you've entered that information, you're going to go down here and select all funding sources uh, which financially contributed to that uh, operational expense for that month. So, um, for example, if you are a downtown development authority and you have building rentals and that goes into supporting uh, staff, you may select building rentals. If you are 100% city funded, then you're just going to select city's general funds. Um, if you have a membership program that helps to support that, you may check that. If you're a business improvement district and have funding coming in that helps support staff and operations, again, you may select that. There isn't a right answer here. There's just a right answer for you. So some communities may only select one box. Other ones may have a combination of boxes. Again, it just depends on your program. And again, we're looking at the holistic picture of all revenue streams that are coming in to financially support your operations. Next, we're going to move on to events and volunteers. Um, this will be different, again, for those who are familiar with the process. We have changed this up. Um, so first question, and I will say that there's a lot of conditional logic from this point on. And what that means is that uh, what pops up and what shows up will be different depending on the answers you select. Uh, so if I select yes, there's going to be a series of follow-up questions. And if I select no, that means I just move on to the next section. And we did this intentionally because what I'm trying to do is help you guys move through this process as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, while still making sure we capture the information that we need. So if you said that there were events happening in your downtown during this reporting period, you will select yes, and then you will see a series of questions that follow through with that. If you say no, then again, you would just move on to the next section called job creation. But for demonstrative purposes, we're going to go with yes. Were any of these events funded through or by the Main Street program? Again, this could be sponsorships, general funds, hotel, motel, um, but was the Main Street financially invested in events? If you say yes, then again, we have a follow-up question, and that is, what is the total cumulative expenditures for these events? And so the way I'm looking at this is, if I'm a Main Street manager, we host our annual uh, Taste of Ackworth event, and I know that I bring in 
uh, $6,000 worth of sponsorship and then we put a little bit of our own money into it and so I will look at I have my budget and I know that I spent $6,500 and 30 cents um, I would put that number in again we want to see how much money um, the program itself is investing I'm not worried about uh, events that are happening outside of Main Street I'm not worried about uh, events that are just happening within the district again I'm only looking at it through the this one through the lens of Main Street specifically if you were to select up here that uh, none of these, you know, that there were no events that were funded through or by Main Street, again, you would select no and you would just move on to the next question. And the next question involves volunteer hours. And so we want to know uh, if you could estimate for us the total amount of volunteer hours for all events, board meetings, and committee meetings. Again, this is hosted by the local Main Street program itself. Um, so if you have board members coming to, uh, again, or anybody really, board members, volunteers showing up at committee meetings, sh showing up at a, a board meeting. If you have volunteers showing up at an event that a Main Street that the Main Street program has hosted and executed, they can all be counted here. Um, the reason for this change, if you're used to the old way, is because we are trying to make sure that the data captured is exactly what the National Main Street Center is looking for and how they're looking. Um, to receive it and interpret it. Um, so that's where the change is coming from. Now, I know for some of our programs who have been reporting and doing this for a while, this is going to seem uh, very different than what you've done before. And what I would like to say is that we have included below here a section called optional reporting. And this is only optional and it's only for event specific things uh, the rest of the form itself you're not going to see anything optional uh, popping up again this is only to make sure that we're taking care of those folks who want to track um, events and their impact in downtown again this information right here is not required by the national main street center so we're not requiring you to report it to us but any information that you do report to us in this section will be given back to you as part of that community impact summary now what i will say is that for programs that want to continue tracking this data and you'll see about the data in a second that i'm referring to um, you know this is something that you can utilize to show the impact and engagement of um, your program with the broader community but again um, if you've been frustrated by this process before if you felt like it's not accurate um, if you struggled with it you get a pass and you no longer have to collect that information um, beyond you know, what I'm asking for above. Um, again, so this optional reporting section, uh, it would just be very simple. How many events occurred in the downtown district during this reporting period? This would be for both Main Street and non-Main Street related events. And then again, what is the total estimated attendance for all events? Um, again, I say estimated because a lot of the time, unless we're doing something that's ticketed, we are using an approximation. And then lastly, a section where you could list the events or keep any notes that you need that would be pertinent to, um, to your programs kind of like documentation. Again, this section is optional and we have included it for those communities who have been tracking this information and would like to continue tracking. All right, I'm gonna close that up. Job creation. So if you had any of this happen in your district uh, during the month of the reporting, you would check all that apply. If you have none, you wouldn't select any and you would just move on to the next section. So let's say you have a little bit of everything. You have businesses opening, businesses closing, and businesses expanding. You'll see here that as you scroll down, there's a section for each. Businesses opening, businesses closing, businesses expanding. Um, now, if you were to only select one of them, let's say I didn't have any businesses open but and I didn't have any businesses expand, but I only had businesses close, then that would be the only section that pops up for you. And for each of these, you're gonna say how many businesses opened or closed or expanded and how many jobs were gained or lost due to this opening, closing, or expansion. One of the things that I want to make note of is that if you have selected one of these boxes, whether it's opening, closing, or expansion, 
If you've selected that, that means there has to have been a job created. It's not an expansion if someone didn't create a job. It's not a business closing if jobs weren't lost. It's not a business opening if jobs weren't gained. So if you decide to report something and you report a number here, I always want to see what the impact is job-wise. And again, we're looking at this through whole numbers. I'm not looking for two and a half jobs. I'm not looking for two and three quarter jobs. I'm looking for full people. So how many, how many positions were created? Again, we have a section here for notes, so that way you can track who you're reporting on. And that's always just kind of a good, you know, reference. Um, that way you can make sure if you're reporting on the Classy Cricket opening in, you know, January and you go back and it's March and you're like, man, did I put that in January report? You can go back here and check your notes section and see, yes, I did include them. Um, again, if you didn't do any of these, simply deselect and move on to the next section. All right, this is probably um, the biggest um, section that you're gonna be entering data into, our program projects and expenses section. And in this section, I want you to report on any of the items listed below that occurred within your district during the current reporting period. And this is regardless of the funding stream or funding source. So if you had commercial property sold, residential property sold, if you had a public improvement project happening, if you had a streetscape or beautification project happening, if you had any kind of rehab, and I've broken them down here to commercial, housing, residential, mixed use, again, with new construction or what we also refer to as infill development, um, meaning something didn't exist there and we are filling it in with new construction. Again, I've broken it down into commercial housing mixed use. And if you are one of those really busy bees, you could say check all. And again, you would see here that each of those sections pops up. So I'm not gonna, well, I guess I'm gonna do that because I wanna be able to walk you all through it. But all right, for real estate, you're gonna see how many commercial properties, how many residential properties. Now you'll see here, if I deselect residential, I'm only gonna see the question about commercial. Again, there's this conditional logic in here that really um, helps refine the things that you're gonna see. Um, and again, if I see, something is sold, I want to see the value of that sale. Again, manager's notes help us keep track of what those sales look like. For public improvement projects, streetscape or beautification projects, if you select either of these, all um, or both of the section will uh, populate for either of those. And the reason I did that is a lot of times people get confused and want to track uh, these two things in different areas. I want to make sure we're all ending up in the same place, the correct place. So I have broken them out above. You could check either, you can check both, but it all takes you to the same place. That is intentional. Um, again, that is purposeful. I want to make sure that the information is going to the correct place. So here you're going to list how many of those projects happened, whether it's buying banners, whether that's a streetscape project, maybe it's benches, maybe it's sidewalk repairs, anything like that. How many of these projects have happened? Um, and again, I'm looking at it holistically. If you had um, 14 banners, but you made one purchase, I don't need you to say that it's 14 projects. It's one project. You just had 14 banners purchased. And then so looking then next is what is the total investment? And then here's your manager note section. Again, it's always good to keep these notes down here. It helps you track on, you know, what you have included in previous reports. So I'm going to deselect these, but again, you'll see here, I deselect those, they disappear, but if I select one or just the other, the same section pops up. Again, that is intentional. All right, let's go down to building rehabilitation. Now we have broken these out into commercial, housing or residential and mixed use. And again, that is intentional because we know that there's different things to be considered with each of them. If you're just doing commercial, again, you're gonna see how many rehabs were created or how many building, commercial buildings were rehabbed and what was the total investment in these projects and again, your notes. Now, the, again, the important thing to keep in mind is that I want you to be tracking the impact 
even if that money is not coming from the Main Street Program, the Downtown Development Authority, or the city. Any rehabilitation project, so I mean somebody is fixing up their building, whether that's inside or outside, all the floors, some of the floors, if there is money being invested into someone fixing up their building, I want to see it tracked here. Again, we would see how many projects were completed. We only want to report on something after it's completed and what was the total investment. And again, keeping track whether it's the address or the name of the business, that's always wise. If it's housing, again, we're going to see how many residential um, rehabs were completed and what was the total investment in these projects. One of the things to note is that if you select um, one, actually, let me see. Yep. So like two, we're going to look at that total investment for both of them. So let's say you had, you know, two residential units completed, you know, and then what was the investment for both of them? Okay. And then mixed use, how many mixed use? What was the total investment? Um, again, if there is a number you're reporting, we want to see an investment going with it. Um, those two need to be tied together. And then I'm going to deselect that. And then we're, lastly, we're going to focus on new construction. So if you have new construction that is commercial, um, how many of those commercial buildings are created and what was the investment again if we're reporting one we're reporting the other so if there's a number being reported there should be a financial investment tied to that again if you were to do it and not tie in a financial investment and report that we will not count it on your economic impact summary report at the end of the year because again there needs to be a financial investment tied with every single thing reported up here um, and then you can make notes as to um, what the commercial property created was. If you have housing or residential, again, how many of uh, those units were created, uh, what was the total investment, and then lastly, uh, mixed use, how many new projects, and the total investment. Um, you can either type this in, use this little guide, click up and down, and then again, make a note here. All right, remember you will see as many as you select and all of them are conditional. So that means if it pops up, you need to plug something in. Once you're done with that section, honestly, you're done with the biggest part of the whole entire report. You move on, did you have any new Main Street staff? Yes or no, again, conditional logic will pop up. If you are a Main Street manager and you hired part-time staff, again, we wanna say yes. We wanna see if they're full-time, part-time. We wanna see their name and role and their contact information. Again, that's so we can loop them in on uh, messages that we send out from our office or if we wanna subscribe them to newsletters. Um, and then, if you are a new manager, would you like to receive information about the Georgia Downtown Association? Um, that is a sister organization that works to support downtowns across the state. If you select that, we will pass on your contact information to them and you will receive uh, additional correspondence from them directly. Lastly, did you release any staff? and who what was their name what was their role um, their contact information again so we can make sure we remove them um, or no th sorry this is the interim contact so if let's say the main street manager in ackworth leaves and we want to know in the meantime who should we be reaching out to how sh who should we be working with that's the person who you include here and then an estimated date to fill the vacant position Again, if you're not hiring staff, if you're not releasing staff, you know, it would be very simple. You just say no and move on. Um, let me make sure I've done everything. And then you would say, submit. I'm gonna sign this, saying yes, I certify that everything I have reported is accurate and you're good to go. And your monthly report is submitted. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our team at MainStreet at dca.ga.gov, and we'll be more than happy to help guide you through this process. Thank you.